One question that I've been getting a lot lately has to do with 3D printed respirator masks. And I can understand why. They're everywhere. 3D printing Facebook groups are flooded with these models. YouTube videos, I turn on the local news and they're telling me that some kid in their parents basement is going to save the world by 3D printing these masks. So what's the deal? All right. I'm gonna have to call a timeout here because we need a serious timeout. When I first started seeing these posts, it made me a bit uneasy to be honest. A respirator mask is a serious thing. Before I put on a mask and expose myself to a dangerous situation, I want to know that the mask has been properly engineered and tested by all the right testing organizations and vetted by all the experts, all of them. A mask made by a 3D printer filaments company does not fill me with confidence, nor does downloading one from Thingiverse. And I know what some of you are thinking. Yeah, but as a last resort, when all the N95 masks are gone, something is better than nothing. I've heard that line repeated a lot. Something is better than nothing. Well, maybe. Here's my thing. I think that when your passion is 3D printing, you can sometimes try to force a solution that uses 3D printing. Hey, I've been guilty of doing this. For example, is 3D printing a mask really more effective than sewing together a cloth mask, which is a lot faster to make? I'll leave a link below to a video on sewing your own cloth mask. And this is a method that's actually been approved by the CDC as a viable option when other supplies have been exhausted. I would actually love to see a study comparing these 3D printed masks with a hand-sewn cloth mask. Now the design that's been getting a lot of traction recently is this design made by Copper 3D. The idea behind this design is that you print it flat using their PL active filament which consists of a composite of PLA and a nano copper additive. The company claims that the filament has antibacterial properties that can kill 99.99% of viruses, bacteria, and a range of microorganisms. Now, I don't know how effective this 3D printed mask using PL Active will actually be, and definitely can't speak as to how effective it is against COVID-19. I would love to see some more studies and data that back up this claim. The filament looks to be all sold out anyway, so even if all these claims are true, it doesn't look like you'll be able to get your hands on it anytime soon. I see that some are printing the face mask using regular PLA, again with that same logic of, hey, it's better than nothing. I think you still want to be extra careful here, especially knowing that COVID-19 can live in plastics for up to three days. A false sense of security can be a dangerous thing. Another popular 3D printed response I've seen are face shields. Take a look at what Prusa 3D is doing. They looked at their options to contribute and decided that the best option was to use their 3D printing farm to make face shields. I'm going to link their blog post on the matter because I think it's a great read, specifically their reasoning for going the face shield route rather than the face mask masks, the respirator masks. Some of their major concerns that led them to stay away from the face masks include one, the fact that none of the designs have been tested to ensure they provide protection. Most are making these out of rigid material which do not provide a good seal. This is a critical element of an effective mask. There are questions on the ability to effectively sterilize 3D printed masks. So because of these reasons and others, they decided it would be more effective to focus their resources on face shields. These are made using 3D printed parts and clear plastic sheets and they have made the files available on their website. Now again, based on the fact that the virus can live on plastic for up to three days, and the uncertainty of being able to effectively sterilize the shields, these are one-time use only, at least until they find a reliable way to sterilize the parts. 
Joseph Prusa also makes a few important points to consider if you're looking to manufacture these. I know that there are many out there eager to help out and are using their 3D printers to make these and get them out to different organizations. So I want to reiterate some of these because I think they are very important points. One, you should act as if you already have the virus and take all precautions to not contaminate the shield. This includes wearing masks, a fresh pair of gloves for each item, storing them right away in sealable bags. You should talk to whoever you're manufacturing these masks for and let them know about your manufacturing environment. Store the shields for at least three days before distributing them. Again, going back to the fact that the virus can survive on plastic for up to three days. I do love the way the maker community is coming together to do what we can to contribute our time, resources, and knowledge to try to find solutions that can benefit us all. Maker spaces all over the country are holding online meetings to discuss ways that they can use their resources to contribute to helping out in this pandemic. For example, every day I'm seeing new designs that simplify the manufacturing and assembly process. There are even a bunch of videos showing low-tech approaches that only require scissors, and a hot glue gun as the only tools needed. I'll leave a link to the designs I find promising below and if you are aware of any good designs leave them down below as well. Also leave links below to any maker community resources that you're aware of that are trying to organize and help fight this pandemic. I'll also be following closely to see if a safe 3D printed respirator mask gets developed. The name of the game is rapid prototyping, so we will see rapid innovation. But I do want to see real tests and real data backing up claims, especially when it comes to respirator masks. I don't think we have to settle with something is better than nothing and living with a false sense of security. Okay, tomorrow I'll have a design video for you. I want to take a look at that 3D printed oxygen valve that's been all over the news lately. I'll leave a link to the article below, but a quick summary is that a hospital in Brescia, Italy was running out of them and the manufacturer wasn't able to supply them fast enough. It became a life or death situation for the patients needing oxygen. Someone was able to show up to the hospital with their 3D printer, design and 3D print a replica of the valve and this resulted in lives being saved. Now, I want to stress that this was a life and death situation. It was an emergency and something needed to be done fast. As you can tell from my previous comments, we have to be very cautious when it comes to medical devices. Okay, here's a picture of the valve I found from a quick Google search. Take a screenshot and try to recreate it with Fusion 360. I'll then show you how I would approach the design. Now, my tutorial will be for educational purposes only, so don't even ask me for the STL file. You'll notice that I'm not including any dimensions because that won't be what's important here since I'll be focusing mainly on the strategy or how I would approach the design. Okay, I will see you tomorrow.